We're going to be checking out the Dominican Republic geography now. I'm excited to check this out because I don't really know too much. Let's have a look at this, man. Hey, everybody, if you've never heard of Dominican talk and if you understand and speak English, this is roughly kind of what it's like to be a Spanish speaker listening to a Dominican. And welcome to the DR. All right, nice, nice, nice. They, they, <laughs> what? They talk super geography. fast or something? No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. If you are going to know anything about the Caribbean, you're going to have to know about the DR. This is where Aye. so much began and revolutionized the entire Western world. That's a tall order. Now let's start sailing this ship. Alright, let's learn about the DR, man. Christopher Columbus may have arrived in the Bahamas first. But Famous the DR guy. Is the place where everything with European colonialism in the Western Hemisphere began. First of all, the country is located. Oh, my bad, my bad. They showed a street that was all. Let me put my camera down here. In the Greater Antilles Archipelago in the Caribbean region, taking up two thirds of the island of Hispaniola that it shares with Haiti to the west. Located just uh -huh. southeast of Cuba and east of Jamaica, right across the Mona Passage from Puerto Rico, the country is divided into 31 provinces, and the capital Santo Domingo lies on the south side of the island and acts as a national district. The island owns and operates minor islands and islets off the coast, the largest ones being the Islas Beata, Catalina, and Sauna, which has a lot of starfish, all on the south side. Uh -huh. of the country. Both by area and population, the DR is the second largest country in the caribbean and is the most cool. frequently visited of all the caribbean countries yeah, really sorry, step up your game guys calypso and carnival aren't enough now now before <laughs> columbus came the island was inhabited primarily by taino peoples that were divided into five chiefdoms or casicascos they were marien mawa mawana harawa and hiwe to this day the dr occupies land that historically belonged to all the chiefdoms while haiti only inhabits parts of marien and harawa now let's rewind a little bit and go back to santo domingo shall we santo domingo in itself is paramount to the identity of the dr let alone the Western world. This is the site where so many things started. Founded by Christopher Columbus's brother, Bartholomew, Santo Domingo was the very first permanent European settlement in the Americas. Yeah, nice try, Vinland. A for effort. The very first <laughs> hospital, cathedral, monastery, university, sewer system, fortress, and even cool. castle were all constructed here. Santo Domingo also claims to be the final resting place of Christopher Columbus's body. However, the Spanish kind of disagree. It kind of goes like this. Okay, Dominican Republic, Christopher Columbus died, and he said he wanted to be buried in Santo Domingo. So we're sending the body over to you. Thanks. Oh, actually, as it turns out, you don't have the body anymore. What? Huh? Yes, I do. It's right here. Yeah, actually, after the whole thing with France happened, we moved to Cuba, but then the whole Spanish-America War thing happened, so we just brought it back to Seville. Uh, yeah, we're pretty sure we gave you the wrong body. The one we have even has severe arthritis, just like Columbus had before he died. <laughs> yeah, but we did a DNA test on the corpse, and the results were close to his brothers. Liars! Now, there's a reason why <laughs> this is the, the most hell? visited country in the Caribbean, and part of the reason has to do with all the natural treasures that the land has to offer. Trans the and let's see how pretty knows it is. How to make you feel like you got the full Caribbean experience when it comes to land makeup. First right. of all, the country is dominated by four main mountain chains: the two Cordillera ranges, the Septentrional and the Central, and the two Sierras, the Sierra de Neiva and the Sierra de Barruco in the south. The Cordillera Central is wow. the tallest of all the chains, and at over 3,000 meters high, contains the tallest peak in the entire Caribbean, Pico Duarte. Funny enough, the DR also has the lowest point what in the that? Caribbean as well, Lake Enriquillo, a hypersaline lake located between. Between the two Sierras and is actually a semi arid oh, that's zone so where cacti can be found. Oh, between sick. The two Wait, huh? Between the two Sierras and is actually a semi arid zone where. Wait, is this the ocean? Wait, the light on the ocean looks so sick. Cacti what? Be found. Between the two Cordillera ranges, you can find the Cibao Valley, the most fertile area in the DR where most of the farms and crop fields can be found. Head oh. a little east and you reach the Costanza, the coldest area in the DR where oh sometimes my God. it can even snow in the winter. Otherwise, there are too many amazing wow. nature spots to go over in depth. So I'm just going to briefly list some of the ones that you guys, the Dominican geography, suggested to us. The Los Tres Ojos Caves, oh. Dunas de Bani, oh. Bahia de las oh. Beaches, oh. Los Aitises National Park, oh. the Oh. Now you're Punta talking. Logic. The Cueva de las wow. And that's about it. I love oh, caves. I actually, you know, like caves with like uh, rivers going through them. Oh my god, I love Logic. them so much. The Cueva de las oh, that's so and nice. That's about it. You forgot about the Samana area where you can see whales and stuff. Oh yeah, and the Samana area where you can find whales and stuff. Oh wow. Food is easily grown here as 80% of the land is suitable for agriculture, which alone employs about 70% of the workforce. However, exports uh, are higher good. in textiles and plastic goods. Manufacturing and mining has actually taken a huge boost in the past few decades. In general, the DR may be bustling and hustling, but they still generally keep things green. I mean, if you look at the border with Haiti, you can see the stark contrast in who maintains their side better. Ah, DR. Uh, wait, I mean, if you what? look at the border with Haiti, you can see the stark contrast and who maintains their side better. Ah, DR, you guys have come so far. Let's talk more about who you are. The difference between the borders, even now, though like it's like technically like the same forest is crazy. Touchy. 
The reason being because when it comes to their population, the DR kind of plays by their own rules and we just kind of have to understand it. First of all, the country is made up of about 10 million people and was the first place to import Africans as slaves to the New World. Now, Aye. this is where we have to kind of address the ever slightly tense subject of identity. Due to so many prominent Dominican figures that take the spotlight, the stereotype for the DR is that everyone is black and yes, it is true that the majority of the population has some kind of African ancestry in their heritage. However, it's not that simple. In the US and many parts of the Western world, we tend to live by the one drop rule in which if you got even a little bit of black in you, girl, boy, brother, sister, you black. But in the DR, if you have a little bit of black in you, hermanos, ustedes son indios. Kind of like how we mentioned in the Brazil video, uh, so many people in the DR are mixed that they kind of created a whole new race for themselves right. called indio, which categorizes a whole spectrum of skin color gradations. That being said, the country is about 73% mixed, 16% white, and the rest identify as straight up black with a small community of Asians and indigenous inhabitants. Many right, Dominicans cool. are shocked when they come to the US and are labeled as black since they aren't called such a title in their country. Nonetheless, right. they embrace their mixed heritage and prefer not to be labeled fully under just one side. Culture-wise, Dominicans are known by many other Latinos to be some of the fastest talkers in the Latin world, almost on par with Chile. Also, they have an entire reservoir of distinct Dominican slang and idioms, such as que mi, juntadera, pila, hevo, or pila. Heva. Then you have like real descriptive words and phrases like lambon, palomo, tiguera, huh? serruch. Wait, wait, this one word means all of this. Words and phrases like lambon, palom. So, palom. Someone lets themselves get taken. Oh, yeah. Como, tigere, cerucho, oh, is that not just and a mean? Like Venezuela, they also use the word vaina, which could literally mean anything. You can use it in a sentence as a filler. Otherwise, the typical huh? cultural traits that everybody knows about are kind of engraved in societies such as merengue and bachata being the national dances. Even if you're a paraplegic in the DR, you will know merengue and bachata. It's in their blood. Baseball is, of course, the most popular sport, and it's said that it was brought over in the 19th century from American merchant marines and has since then become just as much of a national pastime. Dominican baseball. Baseball players are highly sought after when it comes to drafting season in the US MLB. Of course, as wow. I say, this poor is just kind of standing there rolling his eyes. Let's explain why. The DR is without a doubt one of the top dogs in the Caribbean. Therefore, they got a lot on their plate when it comes to diplomacy. Now, when it comes to CARICOM, the DR is kind of like Gandalf sitting amongst a Hobbit town hall meeting. Even though you <laughs> think it would be, the DR is actually not a full member of CARICOM, but rather an observer state. Nonetheless, the DR enjoys sitting on the side, watching and encouraging his little cousins as they dispute fiscal policies and exchange commissions. He's like, good job, little guys. Keep up the good work. Aww. Then we get to <laughs> Haiti. Basically, in the quickest way I can put this, after gaining independence from Spain, the DR wanted to join Gran Colombia, but then Haiti was like, nope, and then took over the whole island. Things got really messed up for 22 years, and then the DR fought back, and then Trujillo came along, and... Oh, shit. Yeah. I don't want to say he was like the Hitler of the Caribbean, but... Eh, you be the judge. Anyway, since then, there's always been a slight civil discourse wow, I never when it comes knew that. to the two countries. Today, many Haitians cross the border illegally to try to find work, and the DR is becoming slightly wary of the process dealing with this issue. Nonetheless, they still do great business and trade with each other. It's just, you know, they kind of have to work together because they kind of share that whole island. The U.S. and Spain have Very always true. been close, close friends. The U.S. is the largest export and import partner, as well as encourager of economic development. Over 100,000 Americans... you know what? I've seen quite a few drug now videos in literally nearly every single one the u.s is just the main friend of every country like just you know what i mean DR, many with dual that's how important the u.s is dominicans can be found in the u.s most heavily concentrated very in close ties to everyone like new york and new jersey well i say everyone but not not all countries we obviously know a few that they're definitely not close ties with but florida spain is once again kind of Wait, live in the dr many with dual citizenship and over one oh, million cool. dominicans can be found in the u.s most oh wow concentrated in the northeast states like new york and new jersey and in florida spain is once again kind of seen as like the motherland and to this day they still hold close ties spain has signed numerous treaties and agreements with them and each side absolutely loves it when the other side visits their country when it comes to their very best friends however just like we mentioned in the cuba episode it would have to be Cuba and the U.S. unincorporated territory island of Puerto Rico, which with all intents and purposes kind of acts like its own country. These three are the Latin trifecta of the Caribbean, the three musketeers. Even when one of them was going through a crazy time, they still held on to each other and pulled through as best friends. Aww. Although don't get started on the whole merengue and mofongo thing with Puerto Ricans. Friend or no friend, they will go all out ham on the DR if they claim they are better. In conclusion, <laughs> the DR is where so much of the new world, and for that matter, the entire western hemisphere started to get radically revolutionized. They really are like the godfather of the 
Caribbean. And once you visit, you'll find a lot of offers you can't refuse. Ready, Stay cool. tuned. Actually, East Timor. Remember, we're going by the English names. East Timor. It's <laughs> coming up next. Really cool, really interesting video. I enjoyed that one. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe. If you guys got any videos you want me to check out, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you all in the next video.